people, we don't talk about things that are nonsense. We don't even entertain nonsense, my brother. So we're not even going to even go there with all due respect. But I appreciate you as a journalist asking. <laughs> Thank you. As Shakuris, we're used, kind of used to not being able to trust the legal systems to to protect us in that way. You think I'm gonna be sending up my people like these dudes did me? I'm not. I'm, you can lock me the fuck up right now. And I already know what the fuck you guys want. Cause well, y'all y'all follow me around for 15 years for this punk. By now, most of us know about Keith D's arrest. Of course, so many hip-hop fans were happy about it. I mean, this was the guy that loudly bragged for years about his part in Tupac Shakur's He even wrote a book about it, but apparently things are not going well for him now. His arrest seemed like a long-awaited moment for those who love Tupac and wanted justice. My brother is gone, Yeah. and it's affected my entire life, and my children's life, and my siblings' lives, my parents. Now, knowing how much so many people wanted justice for Tupac, the report that the FBI is finally ready to reveal some evidence they've kept wrapped up about the case is definitely good news. So yes, it would appear the FBI has finally agreed to show previously hidden evidence in the Tupac murder case. If the stories are to be believed, then this one is a real doozy, guys, because it looks like it involves our residential bad boy. Savage! I'm a savage! Oh! I'm a savage! Whatever I want to do, but what's happening to Keith D now, though? Reports say he is going through very tough times. He's been attacked, threatened, and faced many terrible incidents. Given his infamous past, it's not surprising he has become a target. After all, he's linked to the death of one of the most beloved rappers ever. But whatever Tupac meant to the world, he meant 500 times more to us. Is there more to this story? Sources suggest that Keith D's problems aren't just because of his role in Tupac's there's talk that someone powerful might be behind these attacks, and that someone could be Sean Diddy Combs. But if he would have gave him them the money, it'd have been for hire and Puffy would be locked up. Why would Diddy be involved? Before Keith D's arrest, rumors were already circulating that Diddy might have played a role in Tupac's some insiders claim that Diddy paid Keith D a million dollars through a man named Eric Von Zip, both Tupac and Suge Knight. In interviews, Keith D has said that Diddy called him after Tupac's death to confirm if it was their doing. This implies that Diddy might have hired him for the hit. I heard that they got Did Keith D think about the consequences of his bragging? Probably not. When he boasted about Tupac, he likely didn't consider what could happen next, but everything changed when he was arrested as a suspect case. With a trial coming up, the stakes got much higher. It's possible that Diddy, worried about what Keith D might say in court, decided to take action to keep him quiet. This idea isn't too far-fetched considering Diddy's history of allegedly threatening and hurting people. And Davis says that he was telling on himself and not trying to provide evidence against anyone else. He's accused of orchestrating the plot to Shakur. The most shocking reason Diddy might want to silence Keith D came out during Keith D's trial. Keith D claimed that he went undercover to connect Sean Diddy Combs to Tupac. This was first reported by The Sun, which got a 179-page court file from Las Vegas prosecutors. Keith D named seven, Diddy 77 times in court documents related to Tupac. But let's clarify this. This isn't the first time he's implicated Diddy, right? This has been a claim. Keith D became an informant after he was caught a lot of drugs by a task force. He thought he had immunity, meaning he wouldn't be prosecuted. So he told investigators that Diddy paid a gangster named Eric Zip Martin $1 million to Tupac. This money also covered a hit on Suge Knight. According to the court documents, Davis claims Combs paid Eric Von Martin the money. He also says that Combs offered to set up a phone call with Terrence Brown, who was the driver of the car that rolled up next to Shakur and Suge Knight. During the trial, Keith D argued that former LA detective Greg Kading broke a proffer agreement in the law. He also said that the evidence Kading had going back to 1996 was tainted and shouldn't be used in court. Greg Kading is the detective who recorded Keith D's confession about the <laughs> Keith D said that Diddy offered him $1 million to <laughs> Tupac and Suge Knight. Despite these serious accusations, some people think Keith D is not smart because he has been bragging about his involvement in Tupac's 
publicly. So how did it all get to this point? Let's look closer at the details. Now Davis says that he was telling on himself and not trying to provide evidence against anyone else. He's accused of orchestrating the plot to Shakur. Keith D, once known as a big gangster from the 1990s, is now facing a lot of trouble. He got arrested, and since then his situation has gotten worse. Not only is he in legal trouble, but he's also been attacked several times in jail. Reggie Wright Jr., who used to work with Suge Knight and whose dad was a gang enforcer, talked about this in a new interview with Bomb One St. Reggie said, Heard he got beat up about three times already in there. And I got that confirmed from a very good source. But nothing major. Just kicked, stomped, hit. Nothing like what he might get later. Keith D's reputation has taken a big hit too. He used to be seen as a respected OG who talked about his connections to Tupac on YouTube. But now, people in jail think he's a fool facing charges. Before his trial, Keefe was in protective custody for several months, struggling. His tough image as a famous gangster is gone. People in his old neighborhood now see him as a joke for talking too much about his involvement in Tupac's case. A source said he's been frustrated because his legal team didn't ask for bail right away after his trial date was set in early November. Yeah. Trial uh, is, has not begun yet, and um, he is trying to get out on bail, and, and uh, there is a hearing scheduled on that soon. Yeah, I think the prosecutors are saying he is a danger to society, and look. Instead, Keefe's lawyers filed for bail on December 14th, 2023, just over a week before Christmas. They said Keefe only gave interviews about Tupac's to make money and for fun. But these interviews led to his arrest instead. The first sign Keefe might get arrested came in July 2023, when detectives searched his home in Henderson, Nevada. Then in September 2023, after a grand jury heard strong evidence against him for six weeks, Keefe was arrested near his home. Even with all his legal trouble, Keefe seemed to enjoy the attention from his connection to Tupac. When he was arrested, body cam footage shows him telling the police that this is the biggest case in Las Vegas history. Keefe D, whose real name is Dwayne Keith Davis has always loved being in the spotlight. He often gave interviews where he talked about his part in planning the attack on Tupac Shakur. He even wrote a book called Compton Street Legend where he described but now his love for attention has gotten him into serious trouble. One over here. Appreciate your cooperation, okay? I'm gonna stand right here in front of the car. Yep, pleasure. Nope, we're going to put it down. I know, welcome. hang on. Put, the, put that down for a second, all right? Detectives say that Keith D's own words are the reason he's being charged with If found guilty, he could spend the rest of his life in prison, according to a source who spoke with the U.S. Sun. Keith is now dealing with many problems that are affecting his mental health as he waits for his trial in jail. The source said, Keith is feeling a lot of emotions right now. One of the hardest things for him is how much his status has changed. He used to be seen as a respected street legend, but now people see him as a joke. They think he's foolish for getting himself into such serious trouble and possibly facing life in prison. Losing his image and respect has been really hard for him, even more than the other problems he's facing. The source, who knows Keefe's family, added, When someone like Keefe loses their status, they go from being untouchable and respected to being vulnerable. This has real consequences for him every day. Keefe is scared for his safety now because he's no longer seen as powerful. He's been telling his family about his fears of what might happen to him in jail. The source also mentioned that Keefe, who used to call himself a kingpin in LA and was once a multi-millionaire drug dealer, hates being locked up alone for most of the day. He really misses his family. He thought the legal process would be quick after his trial date was set, but things take time and there are many legal steps to go through. In 2024, Keefe D's situation got worse. His bail, set at $750,000, was denied in June. Keefe made things worse for himself when he published his book in 2019. In the book, he wrote about the night Tupac was he said, One of my guys from the back seat grabbed the Glock and started shooting back. As the bullets kept flying, I ducked down so I wouldn't get hit. But Shug was already wounded, and he was the one that got touched. As the rounds continued flying, I ducked down so I wouldn't get hit. Basically, yeah. He also talked about meeting with Sean Diddy Combs to plan the hit and mentioned that members of Death Row Records attacked his nephew near a casino, making the attack personal. When talks about a million dollar bounty on Suge Knight and Tupac Shakur came up, that was business. But after Tupac, Suge, and those Death Row guys attacked my nephew Baby Lane Anderson, it became personal, Keefe wrote. Keefe D has appeared in many interviews over the years, talking in detail about the night of Tupac's 
These public talks might have broken a deal he made with Los Angeles investigators in 2009. In that deal, he gave information about Tupac's in exchange for immunity, meaning he wouldn't be charged for his role in the crime. Now Keith D is paying the price for his need for attention. His own words have put him in a very tough spot. However, by speaking publicly about the details of the Keith D violated the terms of this agreement. Law enforcement kept track of every instance where Keith talked about the using his own words as evidence, which eventually led to his arrest. He leaned over on the window, we rolled down the window, pop. Who was it? They would throw on my side, I would pop them. You know what I'm saying? They, but they was on the other side. Now, on top of all these problems, losing his reputation and currently losing the lawsuit, Keith D also has to figure out how to protect himself in prison because Diddy is supposedly after him. Let's delve into how Keith and Diddy crossed paths. In the early 90s, Keith D met Diddy through a mutual friend named Eric Von Zip Martin. Zip introduced them at a party and they shook hands. Keith remembers that Diddy, also known as Puffy, had a bit of style but seemed like a young kid to him. At that time, Diddy was just starting his career, promoting talented artists, and he didn't have much money. Their first real interaction happened when Diddy needed a car for Usher's music video, Can You Get With It? Keith D rented a car to Diddy for $2,400. However, Usher damaged the car by dancing on it, and Diddy ended up paying $4,400 instead. Back then, Keith was part of a car club in Southside Compton, known for its wealth and many cars. In the summer of 1995, Zip invited Keith D to a party called The Beat Summer Jam, organized by Diddy. Suge Knight, a well-known figure in the music industry was also at the party. Suge was jealous of Diddy's success because by that time, Diddy's artist Biggie had a hit song, One More Chance, playing everywhere. Suge asked Keith how he knew Diddy, and Keith replied that he knew him like everyone else, implying through street connections. This was the start of tension between Suge and Diddy. The situation worsened when Suge's friend, Big Jake, was during a fight between Suge's Death Row Records and Diddy's Bad Boy Records at a club in Atlanta. Suge blamed Diddy for the Keith recalled someone from Bad Boy calling him and saying, your boy, big CEO, is tripping, referring to Suge. Keith responded by asking for 40 to 50 tickets to their concerts, implying they would show up in large numbers. Diddy would give them tickets to Bad Boy's West Coast shows. Keith and his crew would meet up with them at hotels, get the tickets, and attend the shows. The Crips, Keith's gang, were often backstage at these concerts. Because Zip and Diddy were in constant contact with Keith, he always knew where Diddy was and could find him if needed. Keith claimed that Diddy was so scared of Suge and the potential danger that he hired ex-Navy SEALs to protect him. These bodyguards wore earpieces and acted like they were from the CIA, staying in the hotel room next to Diddy's suite. According to Keith D's story, Zip and Puffy met at a club and called him over. Then the following conversation took place. What's up? Keith asked. I need a couple of problems I need to be handled. Big CEO and pack, responded Puff. Keith enthusiastically said, that's not a problem. We can make that happen. Again, according to Keith's word, Puffy offered a million dollars to K-word Tupac and Shug Knight. Now, what did Keith think about Shug? For him, he was soft. He didn't care one bit about Shug Knight and his crew. That time, Keith had some argument with Suge and Death Row in general. For starters, one of the girls from Death Row complained to the label's boss that she and her friend were beaten by Keith D and his crew. Keith told her, well, B, I'm not from Death Row. And I remember when I interviewed TK Kirkland, who was actually roommates with Zip at one point, they were that close. He actually said, yeah. The fans said that too. He said, actually happened. The entire conflict took place because the time of filming a music video for Death Row, Keith, who was present there, happened to accidentally touch the girl's behind while she was going down the stairs. The girl then said, it's an a-hole from Death Row. And then, when Keith's people and those from Death Row were going to be at the same club, Shugs's car was shot at and he thought Keith D was involved in that. However, according to the gangster's words, that was not the case. Also, he had issues with Tupac because of these lines. Some Southsiders were up on the blues on Sunset, and they ran into Tupac. One of the gang members went up and grabbed Tupac by the collar and pushed him against the wall and said, Man, you know what that Long Beach and Rosecrans stand for? Keith says Pac thought that the guys from Death Row would protect him, but no one came to the rescue. Next, a fight took place that changed hip-hop forever. One of Keith D's friends went to a mall, where he came across their rival gang. They started beating him up, and then help arrived just in time, and they beat them up in return, took a chain with the Death Row logo on. Orlando 
Orlando Anderson was present in that fight. According to the words of Napoleon from Outlaws, he claimed that a rumor circulated at that time that Puffy was willing to pay $10,000 to anyone who would steal a death row chain. On the 7th of September 1996, a fight broke out between Tupac Shakur, also known as Tupac, and Orlando Anderson. Tupac wanted to fight Orlando to get revenge for his friend. After the fight, Keith D, who was Orlando's uncle, wanted to get back at Tupac and Suge Knight. Keith felt humiliated by the attack on his nephew. He thought Suge Knight and the whole music industry were full of fake gangsters. On top of that, Diddy, who was also known as Puff Daddy, had offered a million dollars to anyone who could Tupac and Suge Knight. So a few hours after the fight, Tupac was shot and before Keith D was arrested, he talked about how meeting Diddy was the worst thing that ever happened to him. Keith said that Diddy pitted him against Suge Knight, which led to the downfall of both Keith and Suge, while Diddy continued to be successful with his music empire. You think I don't be setting up my people like these dudes did me? I'm not, I'm, you can lock me up right now. I already know what the you guys want. Well, y'all follow me around for 15 years for this punk ass boy. Keith D said, if I wouldn't have ever met him, I wouldn't have ever been involved in this BS. I would have never met the brother. I never would have been involved in this BS. Me and Suge, we played on the same Pop Warner team and everything. My homeboys helped put Suge in the game. It really crashed two people's empires in one night. Mine's for sure. Suge's too. Diddy the only one still balling. He made our stuff go down, man. He won't even look out or nothing because he pitted us against each other, which was kind of smart. We're Crips and Suge was Bloods. Suge Knight, who was both a witness and a victim in the shooting, shared his story with the Las Vegas police three days after the event. He remembered the night of September 7, 1996, when he and Tupac were driving along Las Vegas Boulevard. They were listening to rap music when suddenly gunshots disrupted their conversation at a red light. Suge told the police, Tupac was like trying to get to the back seat. I grabbed him and pulled him down. It was about 15 gunshots. They hit my head. I grabbed him and pulled him down. Suge was hit by bullets on his shoulder, neck, and chest. He said neither he nor Tupac provoked the shooters and they did not know who they were. After the shooting, Suge shared an important detail about Tupac's reaction. Even though Tupac was severely injured, he was worried about Suge. Tupac said, you the one they shot in the head, you shot in the head. In a 1996 MTV News interview, just a week after Tupac's death, Suge talked about what happened after the shooting. He said that even though the situation was very serious, he and Tupac were still joking as they rushed to the hospital. Trying to get him to the hospital didn't make me realize that I was shot. Because usually when you get shot in the head, the first thing the person do is panic. You know, bam, I'm shot in the head, I'm about to die. Suge said, Pac saved my life. I got shot in the head and I got grazed in other places, but I still got the bullet in my head. It's still there. Trying to get him to the hospital didn't make me realize I was shot, because usually when you get shot in the head, the first thing the person does is panic. You know, bam, I'm shot in the head, I'm about to die. And once you do that, you can't drive nowhere. My whole thing was Pac was shot, I'm like, you shot, let me get you to the hospital. I'm driving to the hospital and Pac looks at me and said, you know what, you need a doctor more than me, you the one shot in your head. And we laughed the whole time we were finding our way to the hospital. Pac was a man the whole time. He was cracking jokes. He continued saying, he was conscious on the way to the hospital, he was conscious in the ambulance, he was conscious after they did the surgery. The feud took another heartbreaking turn, leading to the loss of yet another hip-hop icon. Six months after Tupac's passing on March 9, 1997, Biggie became the victim of a drive-by shooting in Los Angeles, California. On the night of March 8, 1997, Biggie Smalls was having fun at a Soul Train Awards after party in LA. The party was hosted by Vibe and Quest Records at the Peterson Automotive Museum. Everything was going well until 12.30 a.m. when the fire department had to stop the party because the crowd was too excited. Biggie and his friends decided to leave and go back to their hotel. They were in two GMC Suburbans. Biggie sat in the front passenger seat with Lil Cease. Diddy was in the other car with his bodyguards. Around 12.45 a.m., the streets were busy with people leaving the party. Biggie's car stopped at a red light near the museum. Suddenly, a black Chevrolet Impala drove up next to them. The driver, who was dressed in a blue suit and bow tie, rolled down his window and started shooting at Biggie's car with a 9mm pistol. Four bullets hit Biggie. His friends rushed him to Cedar sinai Medical Center, but he was declared dead at 1 15th. EIM Biggie was only 24 years old when he died. An autopsy done 15 years later showed that the last bullet was the one that 
killed him. It went through his right hip and hit his colon, liver, heart, and left lung before stopping in his left shoulder. This was a sad end to a major figure in hip-hop. It's really sad that we lost two of the biggest hip-hop rappers, Biggie and Tupac, because of these pointless fights. Recently, the person responsible for Tupac's death has been caught. We hope that everyone involved in these sad events will be found. Justice must be served. This will help bring peace to those affected. I mean, they deserve to know the truth and see justice done.